All right, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahabashai, Bahasham, Wahavakar Kwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahabashai, who we reverence and double honors to the elder apostles of Great Most and that teach his truth well, okay, and that continue to teach his truth well, and to the hopeful elect. Across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and learning across the globe. Okay. This lesson is going to be called Seducing, Seducing Spirits and Heretics. Okay. Teaching Lies. Okay. Let's start off on Timothy's. We're going to get straight to the point and we're going to get into all these definitions. And if you're not grounded in the truth, you'd be more likely to be what taken by these things. So I want to start off in 1 Timothy 4. That's why it's so important that we're grounded in this truth. Let's go to 1 Timothy 4. Because you can see a lot of men are coming out of the woodworks and just butchering the scriptures, making up their own stuff. Okay. That's why you got to remember who you learnt this truth from. The true teachers that taught you the true doctrine. Men, some men get kicked out of camps. So they, they, um, they have a disdain for the elder apostles and they start teaching something different just to oppose the apostles. No integrity. Let's go to 1 Timothy 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. And when you go into that word expressly, it says in detailed clearly with specific intention so when paul was speaking he was speaking specifically of particular men in detail that in the latter times these last days some shall depart from the faith they would veer off from the faith depart okay from the faith from the truth and what does depart mean to be sidetracked to deviate to go away see there's a difference there's men that no longer part of a camp. You may, not, you may not be a part of Great Millstone. But you teach in the same doctrine. Which is the 100% truth. The moment you stop doing that. You depart. And I've always said this. Even if you're not in Great Millstone. Stick to what the elder apostles of Great Millstone have taught. Do you, you've got to believe in it's the truth. Because if you don't then. Who has the truth? If the elder apostles of Great Millstone don't have the truth. Then who has it? Who did you learn this truth from? Giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. And the seducing spirit is basically lies. We're going to go into that word seducing. Strong's G, 4108, Planos. Planos. Wandering, roving, misleading, leading into error. A vagabond, a tramp, an imposter, a corruptor. A deceiver so if anybody example if anybody said you are the 12 tribes chart we don't believe that's correct they have a problem with that are they all blacks that's a deceiving spirit if anybody's telling you you can line up your head that's a deceiving spirit if anybody's telling you you can arm one else the flat earth that's a deceiving seducing spirit if anybody's telling you ah oh, you shy he was not with a camp no he had a camp okay he had 12 disciples and it was not just the 12 you had many disciples some are not even written in the scriptures a lot of them are not even written in the scriptures you had secret disciples you had those that were listening among the disciples you had helpers so Yahweh had a body of men you do know when you're reading Timothy's Romans Corinthians that was a body of men that was a church of men if anybody's telling you ah oh, you don't need to you don't need to be in a camp is every brother going to be in a camp? No. But if anybody's telling you camps are wicked. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not so much camps are wicked. It's individuals that are wicked. So it's not wicked to be in a camp. It's just that men are wicked. Okay. So that's a seducing spirit. These are the things you've got to watch out for. Okay. And the seducing spirit is what to set up to lead you astray from the right path. Stick to what you've been taught. The moment you start changing and dicing and all that and making up your own doctrine, you're out of the way. 
stick to what the elder apostles have taught us and it works it's worked and it does work you're changing up the formula it's the same thing just leave it as it is if it's not broke don't change it if it's not broke don't fix it it's the same but men see they have this what this what happens when you're malicious this what happens when you when you hold grudges guess what you start to, to change the doctrine then you you start doing videos saying ah the elders they're old but hold on a minute what happened to the other videos years and two years ago where you were saying double honest of the elder apostles of great millstone or what now they're too old that's a seducing spirit on you that's a seduce, seducing spirit has that has taken hold of you there's such a thing as integrity there's such a thing as in, as integrity and the apostles of great millstone they have the full doctrine if you don't believe that then if, if they don't have it, who does? What, do you have it? So, so now you have it. Now your Habesha is directly dealing with you and nobody else. the fuck out of here. These are seducing spirits, bro. And this is why you've got to be grounded. We're going to go into that. This is why you have to be grounded and rooted in the truth. Seducing spirits. Okay. So these are wandering spirits that are trying to take other men down with them. Because there's a saying, misery loves company. Okay. And the doctrines of devils. And we went into some of them doctrines of devils. Which there's only one doctrine. And you notice how it says doctrines of devils. There's only one true doctrine. Okay. There's men that say. Oh. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit. So hold on a minute. So what are you operating off? <laughs> so what are you operating off then? Because if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. What spirit are you led by? That means you've got the spirit of demons on you. Okay. You've got men that say that. But they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in having elders. Bro, everybody's taught by someone. Okay? Speaking lies. See, see? Speaking lies in hypocrisy. So these men, they have a deceitful tongue. Their whole job is to gather men into the way of destruction. Having their conscience said with a hot iron. So when your conscience is said, it's stamped, it's printed. It's embedded. You ever burnt something, singe it. Once it's burnt, it's burnt. It's stuck in. So these men, you're not, you're not going to um change them. Their mind is already made up. They want to believe in this doctrine. They want to believe in that doctrine. That's why you should. That's why you really you shouldn't be watching all these other camps. It's just gonna confuse you. You're watching IUIC, but then you sneak and watch Great Moose, and then you sneak and watch GOCC. You're not grounded. That's just gonna bug you out. Okay. There's only one doctrine. Okay. Is there going to be individuals that are outside of so-called great Muslim that teach the truth, teach what they're teaching? Yes. They're in the faith. But if you're teaching opposite of what the, what great Muslim teach, which is really the doctrine of Yahabashai, which is passed down to these men, because it was passed down to someone. It, it didn't just immediately, immediately appear out of nowhere. You just had an epiphany. No, there was men. And we believe what that started from what? Who is it? Abba Bivins, King Marsha, and so forth. On the way down to the great most of, of the apostles. Forbidding forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat. So I don't eat meat. Don't eat chicken. So these are these are demons on a man's mind. So for a man to say that. Oh, don't eat lamb. So what are you what are you eating on the um the Passover? It's a lamb. Which the most I've created to be received with thanksgiving of them that believe and know the truth. So now we're going to go straight to this is why you have to be grounded in the faith because if you're not okay you're more likely to get taken and if you're prideful you're more likely to get taken out as well Colossians let's go to Colossians 2 and select your Colossians chapter 2 and 7 very very important matters were did very important it's life and death you t you being a little bit off that's life, it's life and death, it, it matters It matters That's why the scripture says Try the spirits, by the spirits Because there be many false prophets That have gone out into the world You may have the gift of gab You may speak a particular way It don't mean nothing Go to Colossians 2 7 and 9 Give me just a minute 
Here we go. This is Colossians 2 and 7. Start at 6. As ye have therefore received Mashiach, ye have a shy the Lord, so walk ye in him. So you want to be walking in the spirit of Yahweh our Shai. And how does that start? By sticking with the doctrine which has been taught, not very enough away from it. Verse 7, rooted and built up in him. I'm sure I had that word up. Bear me just a minute. Rooted, yet we got it. And built up in him. Establishing the faith as he had been taught, abounding them with thanksgiving. So when you go into that word, rooted. Strong's G, 4492, Krizao. Krizao. Krizao, to cause to strike root, to strengthen with roots. Okay, to render firm. Just like a tree, what has strong, you want a tree to have what? Strong, tender roots. It's like a, well, I'm talking about strong, tender. Strong roots. They start off tender, but what they become strong firm to fix to establish to cause a person or thing to be thoroughly grounded and how is that done through your have a shy and how is that done through the basics you got men that want to go into all the deep stuff but they don't even start with the basics you have a shy who did he come from okay what was his position when he was upon earth why did he go through particular things okay what does he look like rust being thoroughly grounded the milk and that's how you become grounded. So you got men that come into this what two minutes and they want to tell the apostles how it's done. Now so now the elder apostles so supposedly ain't, ain't men of the Lord. Get get the hell out of here with that rubbish. So what so what are you? Got some nerve. And it says, Beware lest any man spoil you, take you through philosophy and vain deceit. So it's through philosophies. Philosophies are what? Demons. Okay, religions of the world, Christianity, vain de and vain deceit, after the tradition tradition of men. Okay, and you can also equate this with the Pharisees as well. They had their own tradition, and after the rudiments of this world, not after the, after Mashiach. There's many. You see, there's there's many spirits out here. Okay, which you have to what defend. You have to defend the gospel. But the only way you're going to defend the gospel if one is rooted. And you're right. If look, if your habashai is dealing with you, these spirits are not going to have no effect. These seducing spirits are not going to trouble you. Okay? They're not going to confound you. Why? Because you're built up. Okay? So now, let's go to this Acts 13 and 8. Let's go to Acts 13 and 8. There was an example of a particular bewitchment. Paul was teaching, I believe it was the deputy. They're very um interesting. This is Acts. Paul was teaching a deputy in the faith, an uh, officer, and you had one with a seducing spirit on him, with a beguiling spirit, and he tried to beguile this deputy. So let's quickly go to see if I can find it. I believe it's Acts 13 and 8. Oh, here it is. This is Acts 13 and 8. But Elimus, Elimus, the sorcerer, another a witch, a beguiler, he had a seducing spirit on him. Because you have men that are also in this truth that are set up to try and take other men away from the truth. Okay? Just because they have, a, they may have a problem with somebody else in another camp. Oh, don't listen to him. None of you are in the spirit. What, what? So, nobody, so nobody's in the spirit. Nobody in, get out of here with that rubbish. So you're the only one that's in the spirit. No, there is. I even even admit there's men in Great Milson that are of the hopeful elect, and there's men that are not going to be of the elect with other with every other group. You always have your good and you have your bad, okay? But you can't label that just one one. No, okay? And it's Yahweh that does the what the picking, the choosing, and it's Yahweh that gets rid of men, okay? But as long as you're abiding in that doctrine, that's a good sign. Even if you're not in the camp, you're still abiding in that. That's a good sign. That means you haven't veered off to the left-hand side. Let's go to Acts 13 and 8. But Elimus, the source of our soul, is his name by interpretation. We've stood. You know what? Verse 6, I like about this. is 8, Acts 13 and 6. And when they had gone through the hour of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, 
So this guy was a sorcerer and he was a false prophet. He was a seducing spirit. So you can have men that are teaching, but they have seducing spirits upon them to lead you in a, in a, in a wrong way, to not have you want to know, knowing the truth. A Jew whose name was Bar Jazas, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, okay, a man that's studious, who called for Barnabas and Saul, in other words, Barnabas and Barnabas was what? Paul's helper, Saul was Paul, and desired to hear the word of the Most High. But Elymas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them. So he was trying to stop other men, these men, the deputy, from listening to Paul and Barnabas. So it's the same today in this trip. You've got certain men like that. I don't listen to the apostles. They're old. No flipping respect. But Alimus and the sorcerer. And what's, what's this thing about? Oh, bro, you shouldn't. Uh, Yahawashai, he was only teaching. Um, certain men, they were only teaching for a number of years, three, four years. You shouldn't be uh, teaching for 40 years. By this time, you're corrupt. So hold on a minute. Example. If, if, if this place, which we know it ain't, if this place was going to another 10, 13 years, the scripture says, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So, again, if the apostles stick with what they've been taught, even the elder apostles of Great Millstone and particular brothers, if they are all teaching this truth, just because you, it says, oh, you have a share the three-year, four-year ministry, or Paul, three-year, two-year ministry, or whatever, does that mean men can't teach this truth when they get old? Do men become corrupted? Yes. But the scripture says, he that shall endure. So you've got men, basically, they're leaning on their own opinion. They're leaning on, the, they're leaning on their emotions. And they're not filtering things through the scriptures. Okay? And they're bucking up against the elder apostles of Great Millstone, which is only going to lead to their destruction. And it says, we've stood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. So you have spirits out here, seducing spirits, that are trying to turn other men away from the faith. You have men that are doing that. Renza, who also is called Paul, the Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, set his eyes on him. So he set his eyes upon what? The seducer. Okay, Elemus. And said, oh, oh, full of all subtlety. Okay, treacherous, deceit, and all mischief. The child of the devil. Thou enemy of all righteousness. Would I not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? So you've got men that are doing that. Why? Because they have seducing spirits on them. That's why they've been called to what? Try and turn away other men from the faith. Okay. And now behold, the hand of the Lord you have is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. And you can't see individuals like that, you can put curses on. Okay. Not seeing the sun for a season. So guess what? Paul put a curse upon him. That he be blind. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. And that's spiritual. Because how he was trying to lead, what's his name, the deputy into darkness. He was led into darkness phys physically. Okay, seeking some to lead him by the hand. When the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished, surprised at that miracle. At the doctrine of the Lord, Jehovah Shai. Okay, so through that. That example, guess what? A miracle was done. That example was made out of what? That seducing spirit. Okay, and there's many in this truth. Like I said, plenty of examples. If anybody's telling you the 12 tribe sites wrong, flat earth, ah, camps are, what's wrong with that? Uh, camps are wicked. Now, camps are not wicked. It's the individuals. Okay. You have a shy dealt with camps. You have a shy dealt with a body of men. It's just, this is men that are, what's that? What's that? They're in that renegade spirit. They think they got it all by themselves. Okay. No. It's a body of men. And you need other men to teach you. Are you is he going to have certain men that teach by themselves? Yes. But are they sticking to the doctrine? That's the, that's the whole thing. If they're doing that, they're on the right path. If you're not doing that, you're in the path of death. That's why it's so important you be grounded. What else have we got? Let's go to Proverbs 24 and 21. The scriptures tell us how to deal with these situations. Just a minute. 
Proverbs 24 and 21. It says, My son, fear the Lord Jehovah and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change. So that word meddle means you don't go back and forth. It's, it's some, if you can clearly see you're trying to teach this individual, and he's just he's breaking down all the scriptures wrong, making up his own stuff. You don't meddle with him. He doesn't believe in Babylon's America. You, you don't, and you've told him and you've warned him, and he still and he still can't get it. You don't go back and forth with him, okay? And you go into that word meddle. All right, to stir up, to contend, to take pledge. You don't take no pledges, promises. You don't try to get him back in the truth. No, you leave him alone. Engage. You don't engage with him, okay? You de you depart from a man like that. Again, I'm saying this tricks because I've seen this. I've laboured with men that once believe in the truth, then overnight, or well, it's, it's not overnight, over time, they start throwing up. Everything they were taught, they start throwing it up. Okay? And they no longer believe anymore. You know, it happens over time. And meddle not with them that are given to change. So you don't meddle, you don't go back and forth. You don't try and to, try and to, to, to save him. You've warned him. Move on. Because that spirit can jump on you. Titus 3 and 10, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. Okay, let's go to Titus 3 and 10. I'm going to go into this word, heretic as well. And these things, um, they, if, if you're grounded, they're easy to spot. These people, they're easy to spot. And watch out for someone like that. Someone that says double honest to the elder apostles in the next year, now they don't believe in the elder. So, so, and this whole thing about, oh, you can't go into prophecy. Yes, you can. Scriptures, the spirit of your Yahweh, actually, the testimony of Yahweh is the spirit of prophecy. So you can. They don't put prophecy before Yahweh because really Yahweh is prophecy. Okay. Ah, don't speak about this. Don't speak about that. That just means when you're on the highways and byways, that just means you're not going to be able to go into prophecy. You're not going to be able to go into these world events. So really, when you say that you cut yourself, now you've limited yourself. Now you made yourself look a, com a complete idiot. Is there men that put other things over your house? Well, your house is going to deal with these men. Do what you have to do. <laughs> okay? To please your house, shy, don't worry about all that other stuff. But he does require... <sighs> He requires we speak of these things. And Yahweh Shai did mention Esau. Because so, who, who writ Proverbs? <laughs> okay. Who writ Wisdom of Solomon? Esau is mentioned in Proverbs. Who writ Proverbs? Solomon. Solomon was Yahweh Shai. So Esau is mentioned by Yahweh Shai. See again, that's another, that's a seducing spirit. This is why you got to be grounded in the faith. Now let's go to Titus 3. Baba Kasha. This is Titus 3 and 10. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. So we're going to get into that word heretic. We got it in the blue letter. So luckily we got it on the online ephemology. And we're going to get it into the blue letter as well. Very important we look up these words. Heretic. Okay. Bear me just a minute, Akio. Very important we go into these words. Okay. Got that up on a blue letter. We're going to get it up on a blue letter first. Type in heretic. Charles G141. Hereticus. 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 Fitted or able to take or choose a thing. So when it says fitted or able to choose a thing, you got men that just make up their own thing. What what appeals to their emotions? They just make make up a doctrine. Or they watch another camp. Well, I like that. I like the way that camp does that. Okay. Schismatic, because having another doctrine in your mind causes you to be schismatic, problematic. 
factitious a follower of a false doctrine. So if you're follow, following a false doctrine, that makes you a heretic. A heretic schismatic. Okay. Now let's go to that word in the online etymology. Heretic. One who holds a doctrine at variance. Woo! With established or dominant standards. Let's read that again. One who holds a doctrine at variance. So when it says holds a doctrine at variance, so if you're holding a different doctrine, a false doctrine, what would that be at variance with? It'd be at variance with Yahweh Shai, the Heavenly Father, and the men that he set up. So that means you've done that. By doing that, you've made yourself at variance with Yahweh Shai, with the Heavenly Father, and with the men he set up. With established or dominant standards. In other words, they're outside of the body. They're outside of the church. Okay, from Latin, hereticus, belonging to a heresy. Okay, again, able to choose. Okay, and that's what you don't want. You don't want to be that guy, a person who holds so called religious beliefs in conflict with the dogma of the so called Roman Catholic Church. That's something else. But in other words, it's to say in, in dogma to the what, what he's been actually taught. A person who holds an orth, unorthodox opinion. That's why you can't have an opinion. When we're bringing up these words, we can't, you can't say, oh, well, I think this. Well, that means you're not sure. It's merely an opinion, which makes you, guess what, an heretic. So now you know what a heretic is. If someone comes to you and says, well, I, I believe this. Uh, you know, I feel like, I, I believe it's this, you know. And they don't want to bring up scriptures. Guess what, that's a heretic. And there's many of them. You bump into them every single day. Oh, I think it should be this way, what? Is it what the scriptures say? If not, guess what? That makes you a heretic. And the scriptures tell you what should happen to a heretic. Bear me just a minute. One thing at a time. Alright. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition, because obviously you've got to admonish him. And an admonition is a warning, exhortation, a mild rebuke. In other words, stop teaching these fools doctrines. Stop watching this camp. Stop running over here. Stop joining... And it's a particular pattern. It seems to be men that are against Great Millstone. They all team up. Like they create an alliance. An unholy alliance. You've seen it as well with particular cats. Okay. And they start doing their own thing. Butchering the scriptures. And it says after the second admonition. Warning. Reject. So once they're rejected. Really begins with Yahweh Shai. What does that mean? They're reprobates. Knowing that he that is such is subverted. Go into that let word Latin subvert to destroy, to overthrow, subvert. So these guys are subverted what to condemnation and sinneth being condemned of himself. You see how important it is to get the doctrine right. And you have to believe, right? You're watching the elder apostle, you have to believe where the men are not. If you don't, just alright, go your own way, but we're going we're going to see. I believe Yahweh Yahweh Shai set up these men and they have the 100% truth. Most of these other camps, they don't have 100% truth. They have truth mixed with lies, which don't make it 100% truth. Just like Esau. Esau has lies and he mixes it with, with part of the truth. That means it's not pure. That means it's not 100%. Okay? So in these last days, the scripture said this would happen. Seducing spirits and heretics. Stick to what you've been taught by the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Do not veer from it. Okay, and you doing that, these scriptures are going to be, be able to make you wise unto salvation. So, on to the next time. Shalom.